Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, tonight I wanted to take a moment and show you the progress that's been done on the Imperial Sector that I've been working on. Um, I've got all of the colors base coated on it, started on some of the weathering. Um, and before I go into the close-ups, I just wanted to point out, you'll see that I got a bandage on my hand. Some people ask me when I've got strange things going on in my hand. I uh, gashed my hand washing a glass, and the glass broke, and it was a pretty good cut, actually. And I got this new hydrocolloid band-aid. It's like a skin-sealing, uh, moisture-retaining bandage. It's like a second skin, like I can bend in it, and uh, this was a pretty uncomfortable cut, and it feels great with this on it. It's supposed to last like seven days. Modern tech. Anyway, um, any of you uh, doing any hobby-related uh, things with knives and you cut yourself, I recommend it. It's a pretty solid bandage, um, and it's uh, helped me to uh, keep working strong on Terranscape stuff. So, uh, this is not about Med 101, however. This is about the Imperial Sector, so let's take a closer look at it. So here's the manufactorum section, uh, and because there's a lot to look at, I'm going to do sort of a handheld, um, so you may notice a little shake in the camera, but I want to be able to get some close-ups of some of these pieces. Um, so this is the manufactorum with the um, double bridge uh, section to the refinery piece over here. And uh, one of the things just to note um, is I you know, wanted to retain the overall reddish theme here. So after I gave it a little bit of a dry brush, um, then I picked out uh, you know, some of the metalwork in um, bronze and um, some in silver. And you can see um, you know, a little red coating on the doors. Um, nothing major, but enough to uh, brighten those up, make them stand out a little bit. Uh, Really difficult in determining, you know, how much to pick out on these pieces. If anybody's built any of these, well, of course, you look at them and you can see all of the detail on them. So I really tried to be sparing and picking out specific things. And this building actually probably had the most uh, variety of color and, uh, you know, um, sort of embellishments picked out on it. And then, um, basically, I figured I'd just do the bridge in silver and uh, gave it a heavy wash with the Vallejo's um, black wash. Now, you, you saw my review on that a while back. Um, it's a super heavy pigment, so I thinned it down with some water and some matte medium so it wouldn't break up and get too, too chalky. But it still produces a pretty dusty effect, which kind of works well as all of this with a bright bulk on color is just so shiny and gleaming. You really need to knock that down a bit, so I was happy to see some of that come down. And I picked out the lamps in the match of the color of the building. Um, and then just picked out just a little, those little, um, you know, bronze bands on those uh, statuary pieces there. Just to, just to break up the overall single tone of the bridge itself. And then did um, similar on this bridge here. Um, so again, I gave it some of that heavy Vallejo wash, which, uh, you know, it's not quite like the GW wash. And over bronze surfaces, it will produce sort of this mottled effect, which I think is kind of nice to break up those big flat, you know, bulk gun uh, spots and uh, the base here at the bottom. And then um, here is the uh, refinery. And actually, you know what, let me, let me pull this aside. So on the refinery piece, a um, couple things of note. Uh, there's this upper section that's the, you know, sort of metalwork, and then I left this sort of concrete gray bottom. I actually just left that, the slate gray primer color from Vallejo Air. And, um, you know, with the tanks and this, um, really a lot of metalwork on there. So what I decided to do is go in with two colors. Um, using this is um, this is actually the Vallejo uh, rust metallic rust, which really isn't at all a rust color. It's sort of like a dark bronze, um, but it's a real nice color. And um, so I picked out some of the trim in that. Did some of the piping in it. Left some of the piping black here, and in areas um, away from it went with the you know bolt gun color here. And then over these, I gave them a real heavy wash of the Vallejo sepia color uh, with a little black mixed in, I believe. I think that was a blend. And it just really dirtied it up as these gleaming in that bronze is just super strong. Now, they're going to get more weathering added. So this is, to me, this is actually base layer painting. This isn't weathering, but I just wanted to knock down that highlight, um, really take it down a bit. Um, so you can see, and I dry brushed out the black, 
with a sort of um, a little bit of a Space Wolves gray blended in to just give it a, not a true gray, but like a bluish gray, which kind of plays nicely off of this gray on the bottom. Really brings that highlight out and keeps it, you know, not too bright. It's not competing with the piece, but really kind of accents it, I thought at least. And then I was really unsure about how to paint the decking with the tread plate on these and I decided to go with the black green that I used on the other building and uh, really liked how that came out. I, I didn't want to go with a metallic obviously there's so much metal on this piece already and that that um, uh, black green really looks nice on that and uh, I was really pleased with how that tied it in. And you can see here um, I decided to just pick out the uh, lights if it'll focus, there we go. In uh, grays, um, you know, what to do with lights. Are they working? Are they not? Are they broken? I don't know. So I never really know what to do with those. So I decided to stick with a, just a plain gray on it. And uh, coming around, what would be the front of the building? Because these are sort of the heavy pipe motif, I went with the bronze on those. Picked out a little bit of the trim work on these um, with a matching color to tie it all together and was really, really pleased actually with how this building has come out so far. Um, really, probably the most challenging piece to decide how to paint since it has, you know, quite a bit of metal and some contrasting textures as well. And here you can see the second half of the Manufactorum that has the, um, uh, the area that will receive razor wire as an impromptu barricade. And what I've tried to do is any places where there are panels uh, that you know come from some of the buildings, I've painted them to match. Um, the groundwork has not been touched up, so this will get re-blacked, and I haven't painted the groundwork yet, so you have to ignore that at this moment. Um, but really, um, just trying to pick those out to make them match, and then when I weather them, I'll, I'll you know kind of take that all down a notch with some weathering powders, etc. The only thing I probably don't like that I've done so far are these barrels. And I went in with the Vallejo Black wash, and it's just a very, very strong tone over a very bright barrel. It's a little bit of a strong contrast. Now, these are going to get snow and dust and all sorts of stuff, and I'll probably splash up some mud on them and pile up some snow. So I think I can cover up most of these barrels, and it won't really jump out, but I'd say that's the only real paint effect that was a little bit disappointing on these overall. Um, and then I should probably talk about the interiors of this building before I leave it. And this is kind of standard for most of the buildings. What I've done is I went in with um, the, the a blended black uh, sepia Vallejo wash, wet that down quite a bit. Uh, it looks a little strong on the camera here. Um, and then what I did is puddle it around and push it into areas and try to feather it out. And actually, I think I was pretty effective. I kept cleaning the brush, keeping it wet, and then sort of smoothing that out until there was no pigment coming away from it, as I didn't really want strong puddle lines to show. And I think I was really effective in making those transitions really gradual so that you really wouldn't see them. I really like the effect it gave. As a first level of weathering on the building, it just gives it quick dirt, grime, big, bright, contrasting patches that really show up well against the base colors. And uh, while it was time consuming to do, it wasn't overly onerous in technique. I ended up, oh, here we go. I ended up basically just destroying two brushes. Of course, I won't focus on them, but you get the idea. Uh, all right, focus. There we go. You know, I just shredded those brushes, just kind of mashing it around, sopping it up, moving it around over time. But these are some used brushes anyway. You always got to have a couple beat brushes around. One of the other um, challenges with these uh, buildings before I leave them was that granny grating in here. Decided to go with the rust color as a brush on over the granny grating, and then I just flooded the whole thing with the Vallejo black wash. One of the nice things about the Vallejo wash, it's inexpensive enough, you can use large quantities. I would have gone through tons of Bidab black or Null oil or whatever GW is selling. So I just flooded this whole thing, and it just really dirtied it, matted it down, and um, kind of knocked off a lot of that shine, but still gave it a you know slight metallic look. And that's uh, I like how pretty much that's come out. So of course this is going to get weathering powders added to it and snow, and there's plenty of layers to be added to it. So you're really looking at it at a, a still a, a pretty preliminary stage in terms of finishing colors. And uh, here for the sort of third largest building. This is the one that was finished in the uh, black green. Uh, basically went in and trimmed it with a standard gold color for the emblems. 
And uh, again, the same sort of dirtying pattern here. It did end up with a little bit of a puddle effect. I must have not taken it out far enough, but this deck is going to get a lot of snow on it. Um, and so I'd like the puddles to just basically be stained showing underneath the snow when it's done. So I'm not too worried about that at this moment. Um, but you can see the light bar above the door. And of course, this is the area, you know, where I was really thinking about putting in some of the propaganda posters. Those will show up later. And then here you can see the interior. And again, um, similar styling of dirtying it up. Really looks good against the bright floor colors. Uh, I think it's going to take, you know, the next layers of, of weathering powders and snow and such uh, really well. Um, in the interior, what I did is try to take it in some areas, you know, and pull it down, do some streaking, tried not to be, let's tip that so that's a little bit more light there. There we go. So there you can see, you know, try to pull it down from the roof, um, but, uh, you know, not, not overly, I don't know, it's a tricky process. You know, I wasn't about to try to do oil washes on these. Um, really just trying to work with the materials that I have and not make it too difficult at any one stage since there's so many stages and so many pieces to do. And that gives you a little sense of how that's coming out. And then this is the back half with the sandbag emplacement. Um, gave that a wash with a Badabda black devil in mud uh, over a bright kind of uh, off-white color there. Um, and you can see the interior floor of that building as well. And the, the last building here, the two halves, the pretty much the largest building in sheer size. Um, the one that was done in the sort of dark blue motif. For this, to pick out the trim, what I did is I blended in a little um, bolt gun into the gold to take that gold down a little bit, not make it as strong a contrast as the uh, green building. And I think that worked out pretty well as the blue is not quite as powerful as the green. And I think laying in a heavy gold on top of that might kind of overpower the you know sort of cool color of the building itself. So I was kind of pleased actually with how that came out. I wasn't really sure about that. And I didn't want to mimic the green building exactly, although obviously they're going to look fairly similar. I did put in a wash over the skull pits um, using uh, motto mates and then wiped it off the top surfaces, which kind of produces the effect like I re-dry brushed over it. Um, I have some model mate materials hopefully on the way from the UK. When they arrive and I do the additional work on these buildings, that's when I'll be doing a review on the model mates line. And here you can see the staircase uh, from a side angle. And again, um, even though I did pick out some of these little emblems on the tops here like this, I thought it'd be a little too much to do that on all of these on the side. It would just be too strong. So I left them um, without being picked out and just picked out the crowns of the posts the way I had done around the top and the little emblems on the side here. And you can see some of the metal work that's been put in over the windows with plans for more of that to be done um, once I get the buildings um, just a little bit more finished than they are currently. And for the interior of this building, this gives you a sense of what the interior looks like so far. Picked out all the little bars. Um, lots and lots of little things to pick out. At some point, you just have to stop and say, that's enough. Um, it's so uh, easy to continually just add to these buildings and work on them more and more. So um, at this point, um, basically, basic paint job is done. And now it'll be weathering the exterior, a little more of the interior, and touching up the base. And then we'll be ready to move on to the snow, and we'll be able to wrap up this project. And when I say wrap up, I'm really getting ahead of myself because there's also the Battlescape and the McCrash Lander, uh, those pieces to finish and uh, also to pick out the um, uh, objective markers. Uh, but those are a much smaller, but those are going to be the next phase uh, as I want to get those to the same level as these buildings so then I can do the weathering all at once on all of them. Um, so those will be the next phase that you'll see me do and I'll probably, well, I'll begin work on them as soon as I can um, do a little work on the castle and get a few things done. So uh, that'll be coming up real soon. But overall, I like the way they're coming out. Um, and 
I'd say I'm, I'm getting close to seeing them in a finished state in my mind, which is really nice. And hopefully you've enjoyed following along the process and seeing the different layers as they get added on. Uh, feel free to leave comments, questions down below. Always appreciate them. And uh, keep your eye on the channel. And as I always say, as I'm getting old, uh, I'll be back with another video real soon.